In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the current conditions as always. We're going to be taking a last look probably at that tropical storm. And then we're going to be talking about some more upcoming severe weather that looks quite concerning. Let's just get straight into the current conditions though. And first things first, you can see we're taking a look here at our current conditions. And we do have quite a bit of activity up here in the northwest. Starting with the Rockies and then working our way kind of northward here. We see some showery activity and then all the way back through the Pacific Northwest as well. Uh, so that, that entire corridor is seeing some of that showery activity. Same story up here in the Great Lakes and upper Midwest. We just see these showers uh, for Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois. We're seeing all of these showers down here. And then potentially some thunderstorms and showers down here for the South Central United States from states like Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma. It's coming to an end there. And it's going to be moving down into Louisiana, Mississippi, and Tennessee potentially. We do see some showery activity offshore of the southeast coast where there could be some windiness. There could be some large waves as well with that tropical system offshore. Keep that in mind. Now let's just move into the northwest real quickly. We always start out up here. As you can see, we have quite a bit of this showery activity ongoing up here for the Cascades. States like Oregon, Washington, seeing these showers. And then we see as we work our way a little bit further uh, eastward here into the Rockies, uh, we're seeing a little bit more persistent showery activity, even some snowfall here uh, we're seeing in Wyoming as well. So we're seeing a little bit of snowfall still. And then we have the heavier showers actually as we move our way even further eastward for eastern Montana there. And then the Dakotas, we're seeing some of this showery activity. Uh, the heavier, uh, it's heavier the further south you go here along this corridor. But this overall has heavier showers than any of the areas we just took a look at. Uh, we do see this pocket as well up here for the upper Midwest and Great Lakes as well as portions of Canada there. Obviously, the greens is going to be your light to moderate. Your yellows are going to be more like that moderate to getting towards heavy uh, rainfall that is coming down. And definitely, as we move our way down here, we can see these are probably thunderstorms in here. And that is going to be your heavy rainfall, your light to moderate to heavy rainfall uh, there. Heavier in the reds, obviously. You can always look at this bar here. This is our chart for our radar color table. Although everybody kind of uses the same uh, format. Sometimes they have a blue before the green. But overall, everybody knows green is lighter rain. Yellow is more moderate rain. And orange is as well. And then reds is going to be your heavier rainfall. And pinks is even heavier. Now, as we work our way further south, we can see this is a pretty interesting area over Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma. We're seeing just this light to moderate rainfall and that moderate rainfall is pretty persistent there in the yellows it's a very large area seeing those types of uh impacts so it's pretty interesting there and anyway, we actually get a pretty heavy area down here uh for arkansas oklahoma texas as well down there so keep that in mind as well uh, for the ohio valley we do have some showers moving into these regions so kentucky uh indiana ohio all these areas are seeing some of that uh heavier rainfall there potentially isolated thunderstorms for the southeast, we do have just some isolated thunderstorms and little pockets of showers, although not a lot of land is being impacted. Mostly this, this area looks to be the most imminent threat to be impacted, but um, I would say Florida always kind of has a chance of getting impacts there, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then as we head towards the northeast, it's pretty clear that these showers will be moving into this area eventually, so expect some light to moderate rainfall to take place at some point later in the day today. All right, so I think that covers all of it. Yeah, that should be the entire country there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to move into that model guidance. We'll take a brief look at the tropical storm, although, again, it's basically getting to the point where it's going to be all said and done uh, eventually here soon. And then we're going to take a deep dive into the severe weather because there is some concerns there. And here we are taking a look at that simulated radar. We can see that tropical system actually right here, and we're going to see it just slide offshore as we approach this afternoon. Look at that, just moves away from the coast. So some early estimates of track took it very close to the East Coast. Obviously, it went a lot more like this and went straight out to sea. So the impacts along the eastern seaboard from this one were greatly diminished from that. Basically, wave height might be a foot or two higher along the coast than it typically is, or at least was before this storm hit. Uh, so I would consider that to be pretty minimal impacts unless you're actually getting in the ocean. Uh, there might be some windiness, but I, I actually kind of doubt it. I, I think it's probably just going to be this little tiny increase in wave heights. Um, so that's really good news there. We do see that storminess starts to move into the eastern half of the country. We were taking a look at this in the long range days ago, and we really are seeing this finally taking place. 
As we approach Wednesday, this is going to be June 8th, we see again this just this activity down here in the northeast, in the, the central United States, uh, and really just quiet for the west. It's going to be warm and quiet out west, it appears. Uh, as we approach Thursday afternoon, it's going to be the 9th, we see the same thing, just the storminess is mostly over the eastern half of the nation. Um, Friday, we get a bit of a low moving down, so this is going to bring even heavier precipitation probably for these areas. Uh, by Saturday, we see this, this low kind of reaches the east coast, so we do see some activity along the coast there. This does drop to a 998 millibar low pressure center, which honestly, for June, this kind of is interesting to me because it's not typical to see a storm, like a coastal storm, that develops offshore midway through June like this. Uh, that kind of started out as like a, like, I don't even know. This is much more like a spring or fall or wintertime storm. Uh, it's just... Fairly interesting, I would say, uh, and we can see that this actually moves up the coast just like a nor'easter, so I guess it could be considered a nor'easter, and we get a jet stream about like this, so there is going to be some cooler air over the eastern United States, some storminess in there with this as well, so keep that in mind, uh, and as we approach Monday, so we're moving into next week, this is going to be the 13th of June, we see that a lot of the northern United States has some activity going on, a little bit there in the southeast, but overall, there's like a dome here where like two-thirds of the nation are seeing minimal activity. And it's really the northern United States seeing the activity by this point. And then we see some storminess spread back into the eastern United States as we approach midweek that week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time frame. It's going to be like 14th, 15th, 16th um, time frame of June. So as we approach the midpoint of the month, activity might return to the east. But overall, I would say the central and the eastern United States, we're looking at the most activity, mostly cooler weather as well compared to normal uh, overall, but it's summertime, so it will be hot overall. Um, keep that in mind that I'm not calling for cold temperatures, but it is going to be cooler than what is typical most days. And that only goes really for the next 10 days. The west, though, we're going to be seeing above normal temperatures that appears for a majority of the next 10-day period with a little bit more quiet conditions, I would say. Uh, that's what I would call it. Now, the precipitation over the next 10 days, we're taking a look at a dusting if... Or, <laughs> dusting if anything... Look at me. In the whites, we're expecting no precipitation, basically. Grays will be a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens are going to be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. Yellows will be an inch to two inches. Reds will be two to five inches. And then your brown slash grays are going to be five to ten inches of precipitation. Although I am not seeing a lot of that in the nation. Usually we only see that with either really persistent rainfall in a 10-day period or like a tropical system or very, very strong low. In this case, we're not really seeing any of that. So you could tell that a lot of that activity, though, is in that area I mentioned here. We could see that the activity is mostly in there because we're getting reds for a majority of those areas, indicating uh, two to five inches of rainfall over the next 10 days, which for most folks is above average. Uh, and then for a lot of these areas, we're getting a little bit of some below average precipitation overall. Now for snowfall here, look at this. Uh, we are actually increasing a little bit for some spots, so I might need to be showing this a little bit longer than I originally anticipated. But we can see that if you're anywhere in the grays, you're expecting a dusting, if anything. Blues will be 2 to 6 inches of snowfall, and then your purples will be 6 to 10. Pinks will be 10 to 20. Pastels will be 20 inches plus. We see some of that for the Canadian West Coast, so I felt like sharing that. But really for the United States, I only see some purples there for the Northern Cascades, but none, none really higher than that. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the upcoming temperature pattern. Now here we are taking a look here at that upcoming temperature pattern. Let's just move towards this afternoon. And, and for this frame, we actually see a majority of the warmth here is in the southeast and the southwest, even stretching into the northeast as well with a lot of that cold air dominant in the west. But again, that is going to kind of change. We're going to see this really start to flip. And already by the time we're reaching later on Tuesday into Wednesday, this is going to be about 2 a.m. on Wednesday, June uh, 8th there. We can see that the cold air has moved into primarily the central United States here. Warmth is along the eastern seaboard here, um, but it is heading further eastward. And by the time we reach about Thursday 9th time frame, Thursday the 9th, June 9th, we see cold primarily here and then a lot of warmth primarily up here in the west overall. The southern and the uh, southeastern United States as well do see some of that warmth hanging on. Uh, by the time we reach Friday, it's a lot of the same. Saturday, though, we see the cold really dig into the southeast as well. So we see the entire eastern United States impacted by that cooler air. Again, it's still going to probably be hot, but just not cold. Um, it's it's going to be cooler than normal overall. It's going to be warmer than normal overall for the west here. 
Sunday, it's a lot of the same, except we do see some cold air trying to battle into the west. That could mean the warmth is heading further eastward. And look at it just really take over here. Um, we're about 50-50. Imagine there's like a balance beam, and we're just we're seeing some cold air here pushing the balance beam, but we're also seeing some cold air here pushing the balance beam. So everything is just flat, okay? But once we head towards Tuesday, it looks like the balance beam is definitely seeing a lot more colder air pushed this way and a lot more warmer air pushed this way, uh, which is going to cause the trough to dig here in the west and the ridge to build up here in the east. I hope that makes sense. That analogy might be a little confusing. Uh, but by Wednesday, it looks like the balance beam kind of returns. And then even by the time of reaching later on Wednesday into Thursday, it looks like it's actually flipping tides back to warmth in the west to me with some cold air making its way back into the east. Uh, but really only time can tell this is late in the model run, so uh, we'll be able to tell you more over the coming days. So, of course, be sure to tune in, be sure to subscribe, but um, overall, this is the look to me. Now, let's go ahead and move on and stock. Let's just talk about the National Hurricane Center real quickly and take a look at Tropical Storm Alex. All right, now here is Tropical Storm Alex. As you can see, Alex is impacting Bermuda right now. There's a little black dot below the red Tropical Storm signal uh, or symbol, better yet, and that is where Bermuda is. So, we are seeing impacts there right now. But as we move forward, those impacts will subside and the storm will eventually die out. So uh, first tropical storm, though, this is a little bit later than most years recently. Actually, believe it or not, June 6th is kind of late compared to what we've been seeing in recent years. Uh, May seems to have been the most common time for our first tropical storm. So we're off to a little bit of a later start. But uh, all things are pointing towards a far above average hurricane season this year, actually. And a lot of the um, area, the sources that predict the amount of storms and everything are actually increasing their numbers currently. That's going to have to be something we go over soon actually on the channel, but that is something that is currently taking place. We do expect a more active than normal hurricane season. Now, let's go ahead and move on and talk about the Storm Prediction Center. All right, now here's day one on the categorical outlook. We have one very large general thunderstorm risk there in the lighter green area. That's where we expect general thunderstorms, but keep in mind anything is possible, so heed every watch, warning, and advisory. For the darker green area, we have our marginal risk area, and that is where we expect isolated severe weather to occur throughout the day today on Monday, June 6th. Uh, and then we have two yellow areas there where we expect scattered severe weather, that is called our slight risk region, uh, and we expect scattered severe weather throughout the day today in those areas. Now for day two here, it looks pretty similar. We have a general thunderstorm risk again there in the lighter green, a, a marginal risk again there in the darker green, and then a slight risk there again in the yellow area that's kind of large there over the plains. And then for day three, things kind of break up a little bit. We have a general thunderstorm risk throughout all of the lighter green areas, and then two marginal risks there in the darker green areas where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. Now, for the extended range, this is day four, Thursday, June 9th. We expect a slight risk at least there in that yellow area. That's where we have um, a 15% chance of severe weather, which translates to a slight risk. So that is their expectations at this point for the extended range there on day four. And we even have a day five outlook here for Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee, and a tiny little spot in Louisiana as well, where they do expect a slight risk there at least as well. So keep that in mind. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. Most of what we talked about is in the longer range today, so our confidence is uh, still back down at a four out of six and probably will be for a while. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Larry LePan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harlem, Kodalasa, Capbite, Charles Bennett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Clasey also. Also, to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.